life we are. Kodom. The thing shouldn't be much because the thing is just in the text writer. And then the text writer doesn't accept now for the tab string. What? The constructor. I don't mean that the new line is not nullable, but it's allow null. New allow, new line is that it will not return null, but it allows null in the interaction. But it allows what? For the setter. No, For no, is it the new line, the property, it has an allow null attribute. So basically it's a but the return attribute. type is not nullable. So it will not return null, but it allows null in the input. So the setter but you, allows you're asking, null. You were asking about the tab string, not new line, right? Yeah, I was still waiting there. But so, so tab string seems to be optional, but right, in the sense that if you don't specify, you use default oh. tab string. But yeah. I mean the rest of the rest of the multi variable. I mean, sorry. Just technically, I think tab string could be null. In which case, it would implicitly be treated as an empty string, I believe, in the call to the underlying. T uh, like, oh, we just call write. We just call write with it. Yeah. Oh, we just have a for loop for each, like for i less than in yeah. write. For for the for the overload that doesn't take a tab string, we use a default tab string, which is just four spaces or one tab. Yeah, we'll basically just use the default tab string. Right? Yeah, I would think. But but, I, but the question still remains: Should we make string tab string nullable? Yeah. Well, so the rest of um, the so in order to express the equivalent, you would need to use string dot empty, right? Um, how many people, I guess, do we think yeah. Are, yeah. are using one or the other? I think it's more about the fact, like, you know, what do you expect callers to do? Right? I mean, there was a question also, if you pass a null, what, what do you want the behavior to be? Do you, you assume null means using the default tab string, or do you assume null to mean empty string? Right, that's, it depends on the writer, right? Um, no, the so default tab string is defined here, right? Can you oh, get, yeah, yeah. Can you get the tab string out of the indented text writer? No, I don't think so. The only thing you can set is the indent. I don't think there's a property for No, you cannot get it out. No. And actually, we don't do any validation for it not being null. So null effectively means empty string. So, so I think the only oddity is if you accept null, you would have to clarify what the behavior of null is, which might be more confusing than just making it not null. There, Doc, what do I go with? Oh, I would want to go with what the code currently does. Well, if we've documented that null means empty string, then. Um, fair enough. What's the right overload, which. You don't say anything about whether or not it can be, it should or should not be known. Okay, I'm going to show I mean, this is not a high velocity. Oh. I feel like the intent of the API that you provide something. I would go with that too. Like otherwise, you would set if so. If the intent would have been that the tab string is optional, you would just default it to default tab string, right? But that's not the case. We just treat it as null, and then we just effectively write an empty string by the sheer fact that you know if you pass null to these guys here, it just does nothing. So. Seems right. More concerned about the fact that newline allows null as input. 
What does that mean? It just resets it? It's a two empty string, I suppose. Or an environment. Dot. Use null as your empty as your new line. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it seems a bit unintuitive. I suppose that um, might make sense to just remove the attributes. So what what does it actually mean to set a new line on a text writer? She said it. Uh, I mean, uh, it's the well. So new line is what's used anytime you call right line. Um, just LF instead of CF. Okay. What what does it mean when you set it to move? Just it means environment on new line. Yeah, it looks like it. I would argue it might be there. Yeah, it's a bit of an odd behavior. That you set something and then when you query it, you don't get the same value back. But well, yep. that's the behavior that we ship. So but it's also not that well, you know, frequent API that it might be worth to just remove that attribute. Out of third, is the uh, stuff uses null to mean do the default thing. Yeah, I mean it's and it's valid. it's explicit. It's explicitly documented too. It says if new line is set to null, the default new line is used instead. If you set it to null, you can't can't get null back out of it. You'll get environment. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Well, if we remove the attribute, then for the new uh, new code, you cannot do it. You have to be very explicit on what you're doing, and the old code still compares because it doesn't affect the new code. The old no, code it, it it makes sense if that's what we've documented. Setting null does it just horrifies me. The attribute would also just um, <coughs> avoid more warnings. Yeah, I mean, this is one of those things where... If you have like, a nullable string and you want to uh, set it to the new line, you would get a, a, a warning if you want to have the attribute. I, I, I think having the attribute there makes sense. That's yeah, yeah. what the behavior sense. is. Yeah, document, it just if, if we expect it to document the current behavior, yes, I agree. How many people do you think use this property? Um, on text writer, probably yeah. a few. Actually, quite a lot. That doesn't. That honestly doesn't. People so trying to support multiple. In platforms. API port telemetry, it's seventeen percent. That's way more than I expected. That FX Compat Lab is thirty percent. So I would say, given the usage, yeah, we should not make this nullable. Uh, not nullable, because I have no idea what they're passing because we don't have data for that granularity. But presumably, when you set it, I wouldn't be surprised if you also reset it with null. So it seems, you yeah, it's probably bad API design. And if somebody would bring a new API like this, you would probably tell them not to do it. But I don't know. I don't think there's enough evidence to say we need to change that behavior and not people do it other way and cause a bug there. But, you know, a ton of warning. <clears throat> Anybody have a different opinion or? We just move on. Yeah. No. Collections. Yeah. This won't be hard. Actually, this one won't be hard because it's not generic. Generic ones will be hard. The generic ones are easy because then again, you can't really do anything in generic. <laughs> no, we just have to reason about how, what all the attributes mean. I guess that's true. An object. If, uh, was there an attribute for the indexer on on indexer property? Uh, that would do what? Was there an attribute for the indexer value? No, I know. But what 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 would the attribute do? To say if you allow nullable or not, or is that well, this is object. It's just everything is object question and the untyped, right? Because this is not generic. Oh, okay. So it's just anything can be null? Yeah, you can get null in and you can get null out. This seems reasonable. And the things um, like get range throw with a uh, 
to give indexes out of bounds, they don't just return null. Yes. What I assumed would happen. <clears throat> Interesting. So you can construct a comparable out culture. It's double hard to believe, but makes sense. Yeah, I guess it does make sense because at that point you would have to decide what the policy is. At some point, somebody has to default, right? I think tell it's v1 because nobody gave two thoughts about parameter naming. <laughs> My dictionary D. D. D is good enough. HTTP. Uh, keys returns an empty collection when there's no keys? Yes. Which one should be another one? Whenever you see the object space value, it probably should be object question mark. Yeah, but then I think key should never be available. What is key equals? It seems like an odd API. You pass in first the value and then the key. Oh, I see. Presumably looks through everything and doesn't just stop at the first match. Compares a specific object with a specified key in the hash table. The object to compare with key. The key in the hash table to compare with item. What? Oh, okay, it's actually really dumb. Uh, the, aside from the fact that if, if somehow you manage to pass in, oh, uh, if you pass in the, uh, the, the bucket array itself, it returns false. <laughs> this is not what you're looking for. It just calls the key comparer and asks, is item equal to key using the correct comparer? So is it just saying, are these keys equal? Yeah, so it's, is this key equal to the key at this position in the box? So that's, they wrote a helper to deal with the fact that key compare could be mine. And they made it virtual. But why is item nullable and keys? I mean, key clearly cannot be nullable because there's no null keys. But item presumably is also a value that should I mean, not be null, It right? starts off, contract assert key is not null. I'm looking at meta. And then the last line is return if item was null, false. <laughs> Otherwise, item not equals key. That's it. There was Presumably, it's some kind of try. Um, but do we want to have a uh, attribute on it to say that if it can we actually do that? Not null if not null. That's more like uh, false than null, right? Well, that depends have on what the comparator says. Well, if if, not, if item is null, it doesn't matter, right? Because we bail with not with false, right? So what do we do when the item is null? Uh, you could you could say uh, 
So for the out, it doesn't matter, but for this one, so it returns false if item is the buckets bucket. Otherwise, it returns false if there's no comparer and item is null. Oh, I see. There's no compare. Otherwise, you just go ahead and compare. Yeah. I guess you probably can't make any guarantees. But, but anybody who, for some reason, extended hash table could be using that as a generic compare things and you can see compare. So it does what it does. In the docs, it says that it doesn't accept nulls for the item. But the, it, it throws an argument null exception if item is null and key is null. <laughs> and key is null. Well, if, if. Yeah, but like. Or key is null. Or. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> English and, not yeah. logic and. Yep. Uh, so there's one override of this. Oops. It will null ref if key is null, but the, the one on hash table by itself. Obviously, the docs need. Yeah, in that case, seems like this is more in line with what the implementation does, so even though it's odd. And it's protected, it's so the scope is people caring about it. It will just be weird in our docs when it says, oh, yes, and this will throw when it's not. Uh, but there will be a question mark there. Yeah, I think there's a block mark, right? Yeah. That way. Mm, object key. All right, this looks good. Stop watching. I don't know what it's like. I know. Can you read me there? Good option. So why do we not accept null strings here? Because it seems like everybody else where we have writers, we accept the null string and we just don't write anything. Seems like weird. Maybe it's because it's binary. In binary, you have to write something. String or something. Like that. Can't even find right string. Wait. Right? <laughs> How's that possible? Oh, because it's an idiot. Yep, say so values not for argument not exception. <laughs> that is a little bit on, but okay. If it makes perfect sense, why? Like, what, what would you do? Because you have to write it into a, some binary file, right? So it's probably like perfect. But how's it different from text writer, right? Like? No, because the text writer writes into the string, right? So basically, you can not write anything. In the case of where you write into the file, then you what? You don't write anything. So you write to the zero length, and that's the round spot as. I think that I'm feel what I, I don't know. It feels like a thing. Um, it feels kind of inconsistent. Yeah, this would be my technique. 
don't particularly care uh, which way it goes, as long as it goes the same way. Go for the screen. All right. Why is underlying stream nullable on buffer stream? It only pass in non nullable streams. Um, so we we had some back and forth on this. Uh, buffer stream actually nulls it out um, after you dispose it. So, and you can still access the buffer stream property. Right. So we had some discussion about well, what should happen after you dispose. Um, and you know, do you can still consider your public surface area to be valid or not? Um, and we ended up making it nullable because, well, it can be null. All right. I, th I think that makes sense. Yeah. And, and it's an I feel like we should fix the implementation stuff. That's my opinion on this, but I. Uh, what would you mean change to fix the implementation? Not, uh, not remove the three or make it throw. So well, when? When they try to access after you dispose. And so either of them are breaking changes, right? Because people can depend on this behavior reasonably today, right? They could effectively use underlying stream not now as an indicator that it's not disposed. And so they would have code like if buffered stream dot underlying stream is not null, then you know stream dot. That is undocumented behavior, right? Reasonably. I guess that's fair. I mean, the question is just to how much do we care to break people on this stuff? And I think if, if buffer the only stream time, has been around for a long time. Yeah, if the only time it's null is after you call dispose and it like, doesn't have a dehydrate behavior, say it's stream without the question mark, then that's the object is literally in an in a invalid state. It should sure. throw an object. So, so I think the question then becomes like, okay, when is a good time to make that change? Right? I would argue that this is not the time to make that change. No, I would think the, Wait, uh, the change Jeremy's talking about is just removing the question mark and adding a bang to the implementation, right? Yeah, we just make this not match the implementation. Oh. We tell the contract it does not return null, and if somebody's like, I got null out of this, it's like, it was disposed. Why are we reading copies off of it? <laughs> That's interesting, actually. Uh, yeah, I don't mind that, actually. After, after disposed, the object is in an invalid state, and everything's supposed to throw. In fact, we could literally file a bug against ourselves, and then 5 will actually make it throw when you access, index, uh, 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 access the stream. Yeah. I wouldn't mind that. Yeah. So. A stream uh, now about that. And, and throw the ODE in time. That seems reasonable to me. Yeah. See, lying is actually a valid implementation at times. Maybe we should do the same for, to, uh, for the object to stream. <laughs> uh, yeah. And there goes another two hours of my life. <laughs> I, don't I think I'll take the string and probably take the string are fine will as knowable. And then if people complain, it is not breaking to it will be breaking to if it's without the okay. It's breaking to question mark. In a return? Does it if they were returning null, then you broke them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> let's, let's not go back to that discussion. <laughs> There's no such thing as a change that is not source breaking. It'll break somebody. Somehow. I'm restrained. No, I'm curious. 
Yep. Oh my fucking god. Why does change extension accept null thing and return null thing? But especially accept null thing. I mean, this one I don't mind too much because at least you don't penalize people for it because you basically say, if you don't pass me null, you don't get null. But yeah, you will probably not do APIs like that. Null path in is null out. Yeah. It's the only null out. Couldn't this be a null if not null? Yeah, it, no, it has not null. It's not null. Yes. <laughs> Just invented the API you have in front of you. <laughs> then, I'm surprised that combined doesn't accept null as well. And then it makes it through a surprisingly large amount of work before it checks if extensions null and therefore doesn't need. That works. No, if extensions null, it treats it like. I don't know. It's like it's probably with dot nothing. Hold on. Yeah. yeah, so that one's just trying to follow the FX path guidance of treat null in the empty string. And get directory name returns null for the root, I suppose. And that's why it's not not null if not null. Get directory name, yeah. If you just pass it slash, what would it return? Okay. Good point. Uh, it returns null for empty as well. well yeah, I guess null for empty kind of makes sense because empty really doesn't have a root. But I guess okay. empty and slash is the same in our world. Let's return null string. I think. You say the empty string in is giving null out, Steve? Yes. Forget directory name? Yeah. Yeah. There's a check if path equals null or path internal dot is effectively empty, empty, return null. Are you looking at core? Yeah. Okay, I'm looking at framework. I think I've traced the spaghetti to where it gets to that return null. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It has a lot of doing code as long as it's not null, but could still be empty. And then I think I know the check where it's going to fail and hit return null. Oh, you think I was faster in core after Jeremy <laughs> took the spaghetti and made it something that is not that bad? Yeah. I think Cass didn't help that code base. Yeah, this one, I have to say, like, get a vector name. Like, I, I used to shop for a while that had notable annotations, and that always bugged me. Because it's super common to call directory name and it's basically never not, but you always have to guard against it. That is annoying. But it's not null if not null or empty. <laughs> now we're baking string into the compiler even more. Oh, it's fine. You already know the pinky of a string like this. Yeah, I know. I know. Go make some. And we bake them. I don't worry about it. You'll find more times you can bake into the compiler. This is not the last time you have that. <laughs> Get extension never returns now unless you pass in now. You will always return your empty, I suppose, for a pause without extension. Why do some of these accept null strings? Get file name without extension accepts an unknowable string path. Get full path accepts a non nullable string path. Honestly, part of the reason why things are inconsistent is because you could never see them before. Like, unless you literally could look at the code, what kind of happen, right? Yeah. I mean, consistency is only something that if anybody actually looks at the thing and says, okay, this is now, this is not now, this is weird. Never cared enough, I guess. Get file name. Makes sense. Get path move makes sense.
Okay, so join accepts not a load, but combine does not. Are you sure that's right? How is it even different? I mean, join is the new one. Combine is very weird behavior when the second path is fully qualified. And dot combine for dot net framework takes two, three, or four. It throws if any of the inputs are null. The one that's params throws if the array is null or if any of the members are null. Same for four. Combine says no null. Presumably join accepts null because it's just called as span and on with life and it never bothered actually null and for things that make me very angry, null dot as span the throw. What? Null dot as span is an empty span? As span is an extension method and it's an extension method that treats null as return default instead of as hard to first. You don't null plus null and both nulls are strings. Nope. I, yeah. This is, yeah, it, it is. Right? It's one of the things I found out when I was doing this. String concat. But yeah, so I'm, I'm guessing that one just didn't check whether it was null or not and now we have it. Behavior that null and the empty string are treated the same. I guess it is what it is. Yep. I mean, to be fair, I think it is better to accept nulls and join because that won't like make sense to just ignore it, right? Yeah, I think I I would agree. Also, uh, I mean, for the params, I agree. That's sort of usually the argument on something like that of why you would reject null was like, I don't know if you realize that you didn't ask me what this thing in the middle to join plus is. <laughs> Maybe you forgot to set it. How about, how about you fix your? I mean, strictly speaking, if you screen, right, like if you would use the right directory character and you just join them, you get the exact same behavior. So in that sense, I don't think it's super surprising that null just becomes a null. I mean, you have redundant slashes, but you know, we normalize them away usually. It would potentially force you to actually deal with a case that messed up and potentially get something. Yeah, if you actually have like five values and they can all be null independently, like that code to write is like, right? Like the, <laughs> there's lots of shuffling around the variables and it's doable, but. Stream reader accepts nothing to be null except the one that is optional. That makes sense. I assume if you pass a null encoding, current encoding will just return whatever the default encoding is. Yeah, basically, I would expect the behavior for this to match this. So he's broke. It's basically the you know if you if you read the Detect by white order mark, then you do the right thing. So it kind of depends on. It's blocked. Can you see this block? Yeah. Under the validation. Yeah. So basically, read the entire thing into the buffer. I read, but it always returns. I have no idea how we built a different combination, but it's a virtual, so <laughs> I don't care right now. We really need that. Theme writer, available. Next 
seconds. Better. allow you to pass a null car buffer, but when you pass a car buffer and an index and account will know where. Yeah, that one looks fishy. But we've also had the same case, right? Do we? But I think it showed us right down. Because this is the virtual and the other ones yeah. are the overheads. Yeah, I honestly haven't been paying much attention same to the, the non-virtual ones. The same with the right string. Like for right line, it kind of makes sense to pass there, but for right, yeah. Right, we've said this is odd, and it's also not what we usually do. We just basically, in other places, we accept now, but only when the when the indices are all zero. I mean, if the implementation throws, then the implementation throws, but does it accept now? It probably throws it in my guess, otherwise it really wouldn't have put it there, but from a consistency standpoint, I would still argue it's not ideal. Frameworks implementation, the one that doesn't take an index account, says if buffer is not null, or, and the deferred one starts with if buffer is null, argument null exception. And do you like the same, the same question? Do you like the same question mark? It makes sense when you write line. Why is right different from right left? For the right line of PC, we up the, the virtual. Right I mean, you screen. could just call the non, you could call the empty method. Virtual devoid right of string value. If value is not null, right value to try. Good thing we don't care about the You know what's really expensive? The implementation that takes the char, right? It says for each char in array, right char. <laughs> so this makes <laughs> this makes the array and then the, this makes the array and then and then does that. Yeah, but writing one character at a time is going to be very fun. Right async. That's the same uh, question. So string in the bar Right. Fine. So the asyncs in the base class just ask that factory dot start new all the things. Well, because they were added late. Yeah. So it's they. You know, it's not custom stuff to Yes. I mean, it's, if, you, if you'd already overwritten a text writer, then we added the virtual list with you know, implementation you could have had. So it's just one of those. Everyone, whoever overrode one, needs to override it and use something. So presumably HTML decode should be null if null, right? Or what is it, null if not null? 
Or not now, if not now. Or what if you pass something that's not valid, a valid HTML encoded? Right. Don't think you checked that. So, framework HTML encode only returns null if given null. Yeah. What about HTML decode? HTML decode in or does if a string is null or empty, return. String is null or empty, okay, return. So, so with it should theoretically be not null if not null. Right, and then yeah. in framework decode, uh, likewise, the only time null comes out is when value was null, and that's the, if is null or empty return. An HTML decode, HTML encode, URL decode, URL decode to bytes, URL encode to bytes, probably only not null if not null. Or on code if null return null. Code the bytes if null return null. And presumably the other flows that do other things can't return null. So those are not null or not null. Well, yes, it is not null if it's not null. And null is null and not enough. No, it's the other language. That was so sad when it fixed it. What was the bug? They had an off by one in their, uh, so it, it was in IE, they tried printing the expression that caused the null ref, but they had an off by one in where they were doing the dot operation. So if you did like a.b.c and b was null, then it would say a is null or not an object. Oh, but that's not annoying. If it was a that was null, it hadn't built the expression yet, so null is null or not an object. And that's where that famous, uh, bad error message came from. It's that their error message itself had a no reference. <laughs> I, I think all of this, the implementation leaves in core effects. That's why they don't have attributes. But that's, um, this is still a to do. I think it's still Yeah, it's on my that. plate. I was hoping to do it today, but I didn't get to it. Okay, so there's nothing fundamentally stopping us from, from attributing them like this, right? It's just we haven't done it yet. But the map should be real easy. This is, I meant because there's no reference types, but. Or nullable value type. I am really slow with nulls today. I don't know why. <laughs> Looks right to me. I didn't know what it was. Um. Passing an assembly file, there's no way that that could be not. My favorite APIs. Let me fix this bug. Or it's not giving you an actual number. Yeah, I'm not that good to set what, what enum combination 5,887 is. Um, what happens if you pass a null profile and later get profile, get the empty string? It's a bit odd. Presumably, you get the end for the rest of these. All that. Yeah. Yeah. Framework. Profile. Empty or trim. 
What does make version safe name do if you don't give it a valid name? I mean, it'll attend all the other things. Name is just given as the seed value to string builder. Stream builder. No, no, no. So this API is garbage in right now. Do we have a have a Gigo after this? I think this is implied. Oh yeah, this is one of my favorite APIs. Oh, I don't think it's a good idea at the time. <laughs> I quite frankly in cat, I don't think we have more time. Didn't it almost a lot of these work? The nice obsolete as opposed to everything else we have. Everything else is important. The nice is the only thing we throw on. But we should also go on from an unloading map. That's it, man. That's it. Do you have to return null on something? What? Go back up. Does that mean I get an hour of my life back? No. No, you just do it with something else. We have 7,000 more APIs. Uh, <laughs> what's, the, what's the class that's... Want to uh, give me the next binary? Yep. Which one do we want? Doesn't matter. I'll do my system one time. <laughs> Can you give me the class name of the guy whose properties are the most? Okay, give me a system one time. Do you, if you already have the one with the attributes. I'm waiting to consume Corsi a lot. Oh, so we really don't have a system on time. We have to do the one above it. Okay, I can do it real so fast. Oh, then just give me something else. Okay. Actually, you can check what, and it's probably code access to the attribute. The next one up. So, what was the question? Um, security attribute. Um, so the next one actually seems to be driving from that. Probably do the one in base class. I'm just surprised that. Security attribute create permission or document. It feels weird that we have a factory method that returns null. Framework, I'm not saying anybody here. Uh, it's all of me. I don't know. Plus plus. I don't care. You find her. Nope. Looks like Steven dropped off. Is it because the meeting is over? Wouldn't be. Uh, you might have switched to the other. Meeting. The other meeting. That's oh, meaning. fuck my life! I didn't know the room auto switch. Meetings and microphones never finish up. Well, it doesn't. But he might have. He might have switched to the other one anyway. Oop, oop, found one. Found one. Uh, what room? Did we switch from. The... Permission set attribute. We probably need to go tell them. Create so. permission. Returns null. Okay. All right. But so we wrote one that does return null, so. There, I had a value. Now we go find that. That's in my other folder. Oh. Which one do you want? Collections? The thing is that 
this one, since we're missing the attributes, like the ones remaining, they have implementation in core facts as well. And uh, Stephen haven't had a chance to add the attributes. Sure, then just give me whatever else you have. Okay, I'll give you a collection. I'm actually amazed that we ran through this. That include the generic stuff or just? Uh... That includes uh, generic stuff. Oh, favorite APIs. Actually, favorite APIs. Ones I use most often. Hmm? Ones I use most often. Mm, might use string more often than that. Maybe. But probably not methods. And so. And we kind of just keep them around. Bum, 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 bum. Well, actually, really, we use the, the APIs and systems dot and system that immutable. That's why it wasn't as well. <laughs> Ignoring all the fact that we can speed up so much based on parallelism because everything is immutable. I'm joking. Like, they, they, I mean, there are some issues with the immutable connections. Like, the immutable array is pretty good. Uh, immutable dictionary, we kind of messed up. We should have had a type that is similar to immutable array where basically modifications will, will basically do a full blown copy. Because right now, every time you look up in the dictionary, it's basically a tree walk rather than a hash lookup. Which is unfortunate. We pretty much use uh, immutable dictionary or, uh, array. Yeah, I mean, you have some immutable dictionary at the, at the workspace layer in last time, but I don't think you use immutable list anywhere, which is good. It seems like it's too Yeah, no, we just use immutable, immutable array. Are we muted? No. You sure? Pretty much. Because it just went from red to green. Um, we just and now it's red again. Just... Yes, mute. I don't think I pressed them. No. Joe, are you still with us? Or are you also tuned out? I'm here, and I can. And I, I have, didn't kick, get kicked out by the meeting, so I don't think Steve. Steve probably just left. Yeah, he left. He's also not an IM, so that means he's probably doing some other fun stuff. I mean, it is six o'clock. Six o'clock there. there so. So what? Right. Stephen Tope. <laughs> Give you the path. What? Send you the path word. The the path. Path. Said, I, was, I was planning to do it in a sec. So probably start. Mark. Ref assembly notable. Uh, just some collections. Here we go. All right. Let me. Where's my? Non-generic or generic? It includes both. System collections. I think it, it doesn't include Im immutable, nor specialized, with... nor concurrent. I I'll start with the generic. Bit more. Like... <laughs> <laughs> the button. Here's the button. All right. Doom to doom to... What? No. Let's try this again. Maybe. Yeah, I think this thing has definitely, there is some issue with, uh, I don't know what it is with attributes, but we regressed something in CCI somewhere. Which is very annoying. I also have some back in the UI where I need the exceptions. I mean, it could be a bug, or it could be that you're gracefully handling errors and not crashing the program. 
Yeah, but then I should complete this. I should not hang. I'm pretty sure there's an exception that is... Just now make the thing done. Do you want to so I have no idea. Um, well, I mean, we can just review it for now and then fix the attributes later because we need to then let off pass the attributes anyway, right? Yep. So that's... Yeah, this one, the attributes that I have in the ref assemblies are incomplete. Right, in that case, let's just do what we have. You it, can actually dip it, I think, the old one. I could do that actually, yes. Because we're not using um, that. No. Let me actually do that right now. So I'm getting the eye. I have found my mouse pressor again. And of course, it's the available for system missions. Yep. All right, so here we go. Good array. Or no one can touch. I don't have arrays, but that's it. Seems reasonable. Structural comparisons. Seems reasonable. So what about these guys? They should no longer be full on object, right? They should be we cannot compile for anything. Or support they're not no. Oh it's setup has to take the setup is currently running. That's cool. I don't care. Um Can you make a read only dictionary or dictionary where the um where key is an int question, even like you never pass null to it, but they are int questions. Because if we did where t is t key is not null, that would mean you wouldn't be able to create a int question. An int question dictionary. I just take this out. Right. I would think you can, as long as you don't pass a null int. Right, you can pass box. I shouldn't even know the field. Hmm? Maybe even know the field. Maybe. We might be checking if it's reference type or body type, but based on that. I don't know. But I think they, what they actually do is something actually. Out of T or something equals new or something like that. I'm pretty sure I saw checks like that in the code. You can create the dictionary. Like there's nothing to that prevents you from creating the dictionary. Right. So where T key is not null, I don't think would work. But that's still technically speaking like technically speaking in implements object, right? Hmm? So, I mean, well, still has from the object. No, he's that. speaking about the new constraint. The, the new the constraint, right? Null. The new constraint would be where T key is not null, right? Inherits from not null. But that's not the same as T key object. I think it might be the same. It's, the, not, it's not the well, same. Because the int question mark still inherits from the object. Sure, but this is, that's the old, that's the old constraint. The new constraint is where T key is not null. Int question does not fulfill that. Unless I'm totally misremembering how we're doing where T is where T key is not null. Yeah, or where, where T is null. Um, but but I, I, so I noted that they all should be not nullable, which is probably the right behavior. Because that's how we mark the collection types as well. So you wouldn't be able to construct them. But yeah, that might be interesting. Yep. So yeah, you can create it, you can pass uh, box values. If you pass null, of course it throws. Yeah. So then what we might need to, what we probably need to do is mark um, uh, the, all the T keys, like all the actual T keys. But I, I thought the non-null non constraint would... I don't, think, I don't think you can use a nullable value type to fill a non-null constraint. 
I thought that was the intention. No, the intention is to not use a nullable reference. I thought it was nullable reference or nullable value. If I can find the, the email chain about this. Steven's not online, right? No, nope, correct. Yeah. Wait, what's the constraint called? I can ask Chalk. Yeah, and so. you, you can do that as well. Um, All these slackers are right? getting trying to get work done. Yeah. Fuck. Uh, try Jared anyway. I'll we'll just leave it for later. Just write the yeah. notes and just. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Um, is non <clears throat> does non nullable non nullable All right, noted. Next one. What is it? Pair can be no. Dictionary can't be no. Forty care can be no. Next, second pair is one no. Easy no. So don't we have like but the the next step would be marked with a low null, right? Which one? The index that would be marked as non uh, uh, now, no, correct? Which index? The, this one here. No, because T key. Well, it's about T value, right? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, I, uh, I think that implementation is in course here. Right? I mean, we definitely know now values here. All I'm saying is that like, we would indicate this with the allow now attribute, right? Okay, so I. Going going back to <laughs> going back to not know for a second. I'm popping the stack. Um, no, I'm pushing something onto the onto the back of the queue and popping and and pulling something out. Sure, the front. let's go with that. Uh, uh, so for not null, it looks like we will allow you to substitute uh, into question. It's just that you then can't use null. You can't use a null question in. So you, so we would warn if you passed null. An add method of a dictionary. But that's fine. That's, that, that, that's, in, that's the intent of behavior. Yeah. yeah. Like you cannot pass the no literal, but you will be able to pass a constant that is a nullable value type. Yes. Exactly. Or a or a variable that you determine doesn't hold null. That is a nullable value type. So Imo, like if uh, the generic parameter for the value is non-nullable, then I I don't believe this will ever be. Uh, what? Because you were asking if the indexer should be then uh, allow no, no. Right. For T value. Yeah. So if like if the T value is uh, nullable, then it would maybe then no, no, Yes, because T value will take the value that you constructed dictionary. Because you you won't be able to add it into the dictionary in the first place. Right? That's why you don't need an attribute. What's the question? Here, sorry. If the, the indexer should... should have an attribute on T value. Yeah. No. no, because that will take the whatever nullability uh, you use to create a dictionary. I see. Yes, that's right. Man, this will take a while to get used to. Generics are going to mess with everyone's head. Yeah. Uh, there's no real way around this. Um, Not nah, still having default of T in the language. That was a mistake. Default was a mistake. No, it was a mistake. Only more user here. He invented it. 
is billion dollar mistake. Probably more than that. And I think that's a very conservative estimate. <laughs> the interesting case is the dictionary.add implementation, which takes the Doors. Which takes the object. And then the grayed out. Why is that interesting? Because uh, basically, the nullability depends on the key value. If the key value is non nullable, then but that, that is that is uh, overriding the i dictionary uh, member, yeah. the non generic i dictionary. Still, but you can constrain more, right? No, you can have no values in a dictionary. Yes, but if the key value is non nullable, then you cannot have it. It will allow you to like read the and uh, mm. the that is interesting. So I don't, I don't particularly see a way to get around that, but it is interesting because um, you're you're right in that you could put a null into the dictionary via the uh, non via the interface version via, via the non generic method here. Um, but that's not his point. And his then point get it out, and then that... get and then get the null out, even though uh, T key was constrained to be string. Not sure, but that's more like if you manage to get one in, right? Then you, you, know, you basically lie to yourself, right? But like the, I think his point is more like the making sure the rule. Like, if you didn't remove a thing, then then value will be null, regardless of what the type of t value was. Right. I thought we were talking about add. Yeah. Oh, it's talk about add. I dictionary <laughs> dot add the non generic <laughs> one. Oh, you talk about literally about this one here. Yeah. I see. And yeah, this one is, yeah, this is more like the whole interface. Not that one. No. The, 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 the non generic one. I the second green green go. The second down. green drop. Down, down, down. There. There. That one. Sure. I, I don't see a way to do it. But I don't, I don't see a way to do it. No, it's not, not null, it's not null type of people. <laughs> <laughs> This is not in scope. <laughs> so you need a full it actually is anymore. more in scope than the parameter. <laughs> but, but I this, mean, I meant a different scope. <laughs> but this one would also have an attribute on, on T value, right? This would be null if... Yeah, that should, that should yeah, have a maybe null value. Yeah. Maybe null or false. Yeah, one of the two. But yeah, we don't have them yet, so... Yeah, it has, to, it has to be maybe null or false because T value could be a nullable itself. So you could successfully remove null from the dictionary. All right. Could you take a note of that? Well, you have not done any attribution yet, right? So we have. Oh, it actually has the attribute. The attribute. Yeah, it's probably the. In the implementation, it has it. It has maybe null. Maybe null one false. Yeah. Okay, okay. Cool. so I have to. Oh, that's right. We're not seeing any attributes right now. Big API reviewer. Oh, yeah, true. Still not fresh on attributes. Hint, hint. Nudge, nudge. Yeah, wouldn't it be nice? All right. Say no more, say no more. Three equals. I was going to say. Right. <laughs> this is... Get hash code as well. Okay, good. What is it? Equals and get hash code has have attributes on T as well. Yeah, I would assume. Big one. I might spend 20 years on the eye quality error. Let's talk about generic inference on delegates. Mm -hmm. So hash the hash uh, constructor that takes an eye quality comparer can accept null. But yes. the one that takes a capacity and a compare can I? That is probably a bug, yeah. I would assume so. It must be.
So the Trigger Hugger probably should have the attribute be around the world. Yeah. Seems like that's a bad. The has set constructor the implementation but does have a question. Okay, it might have have messed it up. Uh, I assume Trigger value has an attribute on it? Yep, we just said that. Oh, okay. That's what happens when I pay attention to it. Well, I have a hard time concentrating myself. I don't know why. I think it's maybe because it's 3.30 and I've slept four hours or something. I'd have to see. You try getting more sleep? I think my sleep implementation is nullable. Sounds like a buddy email. Won't fix by the way. On the attribute problem. So I, I think I've used linked list once in the year 2005, and that's about it. Good. I think C++ told me like basically never use linked list because it never works. Yeah, on modern hardware, I think. It's really the preset pretty good. Although after Spectre, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> The well, you're still if you're if you're if you're doing Spectre, you're going through a whole bunch of different un un uh, unrelated memory addresses, and so it's even. I guess. You fetch is totally screwed. Why the heck is the list itself nullable on linked list node? Yeah. That seems like a bug. Is it not? Which one? The list itself. Oh, it's probably filled in after you called add, right? Yeah, because you can... I think the idea is that you have to... You can create a linked list node and then add it, I guess. Yeah, that's the thing that this uh, app is here, right? You basically have the node already. Can you remove a specific node and get it back? Because if you can do that, it will also, right, because then, then yeah. the list. I think, the, yeah. So basically, if list is null, or next, if list is null, it will be invalid. Because we don't get all the attached nodes. Yeah. So that means add and remove will. Fill it in and remove it, and uh, sorry, we yeah. set it and now it. Yeah, we even have a method called invalidate, which yeah. sets list, next, and previous all to null. Yeah. Yes. It does kind of make sense, but it also tells you what this API is not great. Right? And you can pass a null comparer to binary search. And I just call in the version without a binary, without a comparer. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's better than we usually had the things to not even default parameters. I understand why. Just... Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> I'm not saying it's great, I'm just saying that's the way it is. Um, um, clear. I think part of the reason why we have this, by the way, is because of FXCOP. Because FXCOP had this rule that says be always explicit about your comparison. So if there's an overload that takes one, you always have to do something else supposed to pass one. I think find has an attribute. Find? Where do you see it? Uh, yeah, I would need one because it could potentially not find yeah. any. What attributes were find? Or uh, just maybe no. It doesn't find? Yeah, it, it would be maybe no. So it basically returns the default of T or what? Yeah. yeah. Is binary. Binary search will um, uh, and all those images. Find last. Does that have an attribute as well? Oh, this is. Oh, the find last. Uh, Oh yeah, there's one that takes me.
All right, Q. Uh, does peak have an attribute? Or will it fail if there's nothing in the list? Formula, I right? think it fails. Yeah. yeah. Then try peak have an attribute. Try to Q. Q peak quick. fails if the count is zero. Yep. And try peak. I assume, she, I assume that I'll have an attribute. Did you have an attribute? We have an attribute, yeah. Implementation leads in corpus. Okay. But I would expect it to have a Maybe no one falls. Good job. We did not have any sound for the last hour and a half. <laughs> were people telling us on the stream? Uh, we were just I think annoying? just one person just told us. Oh. Well, that's um, awkward. That's unfortunate. Although, hold on. Something wrong here. What happened? We didn't have a... We didn't have... Uh, No, actually, no, we do have audio. Yeah, you do have audio both in the Teams meeting and I think also in YouTube. I mean, the Teams meeting for sure because that's going to a different channel, but. Uh, and clearly you can hear us. I can. And uh, I checked for a sec in YouTube and I was also able to hear you from there. Okay. So um, then, maybe like 20 minutes ago, so it should still be working. Okay, so then. Because then, like, I, I saw the setup. I checked it when we started live streaming, but sometimes things get go south. Um, maybe there was a moment when we were all quietly looking at Santi. <laughs> all right. So the dictionary. Try the Q and try. Yeah. It didn't write any of those up because we don't have attributes yet. Yep. I think we'll do another pass on those. It's like I mostly asked this question to understand what all the attributes were. Just use a sort of dictionary. That's that probably a word. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think I, I think I never used sort of dictionary. Or sort of samples. Or maybe once or twice. Use it for something that I then turned into a assorted immutable array. Jared replied regarding the not null. He what said is that? the not null constraint encompasses notable reference and body type. What does that mean? <laughs> he, say, he says that he will not accept in question mark. Okay. okay. That would be a problem for us. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Well, let me go think about that. I mean, it's probably not a problem in practice, in practice right? Like, how. Why would you want to have a nullable in this an indexer in a dictionary? Right? It seems somewhat fishy to begin with. Well, yes, but like. Shouldn't be able and that's how we ship it, right? Like, I mean, the only way you get feedback on these things is if you actually give it a shot. All right, this seems all reasonable as far as I can tell. Try uh, again, yeah, I would assume what I have tried. Various attributes on it. Can you scroll for a second? Uh, to key collection. Yeah, um, said we designed it that way specifically because Stephen suggested. Um. Sure. Um, it's, oh yeah, it's this is this is inherited. Okay, never mind. I I thought for a moment it had its own T key. Um, 
generic constraint or generic definition, and I didn't see it. Yeah, it's a different thing I always see. And I always actually do. Order list. Yeah. The wind for ride. Look at the signature. Effectively, what this thing is, it's a sorted list where you can index into it. Let me actually get this straight for a moment. Index yeah. into a sorted dictionary table. So, sorry, sorry. Not this isn't relevant to the discussion. <laughs> this is not. This is not relevant. Um, I need to just don't show up. No, I think that I remember correctly, and I mean that's something that is. Which one? Surprised that didn't show up. Yet. So, uh, what, what, what was the difference? Sorted list uses less memory. Sorted dictionary has faster removal operation. Sorted dictionary. It's amazing that you can index by in though, but you can remove by in. You can enumerate, right? Right, but I would expect to see an index that takes an int. Which I think was the case in the non generic version of it. But you can totally remove by end. Anyway. Why would you? Why would you? Well, does it happen to have the end? It makes sense to move like first. Like, um, get first, get lost. Sure. Before you move out, I guess. <laughs> Point set. Then. I assume again, try get. Try get value and move. Um, yeah. Back. Yeah. And that was it. There's nothing more? That's it. We feel like it. Yes. Uh, more on the spot, right? right. I can 25 minutes? Hmm? 25 minutes? You do another one. Or fall asleep. Okay. Damn it. Don't you love it when you accidentally close the window that you need? I guess all the ones we related to Python, we can do them with Steve. Yeah, we should do them with Steve. Like, give me any of the diagnostics ones, for example, because they're all small. I don't have to just around them in Trinity. Interrupt services. Do intrinsic services. should be fast. Yeah. Do intrinsic deal with reference types? That's the thing. So we can at least cross it off in 20 <laughs> minutes, right? Yep.
or less. <laughs> and it isn't here. <laughs> he would totally approve. So I'm waiting. Yeah. Are we going to be meeting on Monday? Hmm? Are we going to be meeting on Monday? Uh, I don't think I set up anything for next week. Okay. Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah tomorrow. tomorrow. But you know, isn't a good point? I should probably start setting things up for next week. We're going to do Monday and request you do it in the morning. Uh, because that way I can actually join remotely. I'm going to do Monday. Morning. I'm going to be you for Monday. So. We do the afternoon. I will be on a plane. Huh? Or just Friday. Well, no? We're heading back from the yeah. Tomorrow is Thursday. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it is not. <laughs> It is not, but I can check in for my flight in 20 minutes. All right, you can find it in the same location. Well, this is just awesome. Yeah. I have to set up some shitty meetings and shitty times, but that's what it is. Because unfortunately, there's a bunch of other meetings that I or others have to go to that I can't set up at the time I want. So I can't do Monday morning because that's when Stephen has his repo structure working group set up. I can't do Tuesday morning because I don't really have an API review. I can't do Wednesday morning because it's an LDM will be. I can't do Thursday morning because it's an opportunity live streaming is. And I can't do Friday because thankfully there's a PM morale event starting at 11. So that leaves me with Monday afternoon and Wednesday afternoon. I'm not be there. And we do Tuesday afternoon. Um, Tuesday afternoon, I wouldn't do because that would be the second of the day. Um, but Thursday, we can probably do it. I don't see another opportunity, but I, I book the Thursday one over lunch. Yeah, let's actually start half an hour late. Probably. Okay, let's do one and a half hours. That's good enough. Tomorrow. Next Thursday. Because otherwise, people will die. Uh, 
actually nice that I go to Zoom. All right, so usual spot you said. All right, so here's the thing intrinsics. Here we go. So I don't think vector is a, I think it's a struct probably, right? Would be my guess. It's class. Why? That's it's static. Is what, because it's static. Yeah, I'm talking about the vector 128. Oh, this is a, oh, oh this the is generic one. one. That's a, that's a struct. Yes. So that means all of those look good. Where is the struct? Just a bunch of bytes. Double, double short, end long. Hearts. Oh. <clears throat> we accept the null format string? Is that really what we do? That does seem different than everywhere else that we're talking about. Yes, we said we don't accept null format strings. We don't? Yep. Um, what is that? Vector 128. Um, Uh, and this is this string. We call we call I for my for my implementation, which also accept. Okay, let me let me cross over this what we said earlier in the notes, but I'm pretty sure we decided that we don't want to accept an alphabet string. No, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like this is basically define them and interpret. We we'll probably want to fix that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, vector two fifty. This is going to be fun. Um what is that? Okay. The suspense, what's the next value? Y E twenty seven? Y E twenty eight? Oh my god. Thing is killing me. Um, yeah. Six. Here, here should just write everything that is a reference type. Yep. So we can just or potentially Once reference we type. Put the interface probably up if we grew. Well, I just meant so that we can ignore everything really. So like... <laughs> uh, we, we should just prefix everything that is a reference type of all. This is not Hungarian. <laughs> One of R. <laughs> I like it. should be R. <laughs> Ideal for talk like a pirate. Oh. 
how's Tanner still the same person? <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at this. He's never allowed to be known. I mean that any of us are same people. We're sitting here reviewing what eleven thousand APIs, um, seventeen thousand APIs. These what are the chances that he's going to? Because this one has fifteen hundred APIs. Simple. I think the only annotations that my PR should be on equals. Yeah, I mean, in fact, probably say that that intrinsic scanning should be the preference. Well, that's terrifying. The, one of the, you have no idea how many times we've booked all of these things and kind of shuffled the names around to make it simpler. And at some point, what am I going to do? I don't think this is ever going to be simple to just pick one and go with it. <laughs> the fact that there are so many ways of comparing floats is terrifying. Yep. I mean, just unordered, not less than non signaling. Sure, that makes perfect sense unless I read this back all the way, right? Either I need to know what it means, or I can just use equals equals, and it's fine. Look at that class. You see, oh, <laughs> it looks like Klingon. It does not look like an SSC two extension. Up count. That one I can get. Yes, this one I know what it is. Yay! I mean, honestly, I'm actually amazed how readable most of it, though, is, like, I'm considering that pretty much everything in the native stuff is, like, a random bunch of characters looks like a chicken went over the dictionary. So most of the stuff, I at least have an idea what it's supposed to do. That's why I said, like, I don't know what he's still saying. That requires some, some thinking. Even now, oh, well, there's like thing up to five now. S S S. Um. It almost looks like a typo. <laughs> well, that's interesting. Yeah, I think he proposed that. And I think yeah. the general consensus was we don't care. Yeah, and you have a pretty, well, old enough reference assembly. Yeah, mine is like from like okay. last week, two weeks ago, maybe. He removed those Sounds like five days ago. No, that was not a typo. That was completely intentional. SSS E three. The standard, 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 standard extension. And we just <laughs> reviewed fifteen hundred APIs in five minutes. Well, when you don't need to look at. Anything. Uh, that was an hour. That's not so. So we have ten minutes. Left. Is there anything worthwhile looking at ten minutes, or should we just end the meeting? Uh, I don't think there is anything worth with you. Because I have system runtime interrupt services, interrupt services, Windows runtime. Oh, that's why my battery is draining. So uh, I'm like, collections need to plug in. Collections concurrent and pretty much all of threading. Running, we need to open. 
we can review collections from current. No, that's something we should do with Steven because he yeah. actually is the expert in that. And that one will also need more attribute. And, what, and whatever we decide to review, you're going to need a couple minutes to get a right. an assembly for it. So we yeah. should probably just call it. I would agree with that. Let's call it, and then I'll get the re references assemblies for system writing. Yeah. How many did we for review tomorrow? in today? Huh? How many did you we do? finished runtime extensions and we covered collections and intrinsic. So it's not good. We have four. We've reviewed four. What do you do? Four reference assemblies out of 29 reference assemblies, but I expect the other ones to go way faster. Yeah, I think we now have, I think we have. We, we're over 50, like 70% 70 percent of APIs yeah. that they're reviewed. Yeah. Amazing. It's like, um, like a, what type of, what type of, to be clear, what type of distribution is that? It's like, there's a few, there's a kind few, a, re a few reference, there's a few assemblies with like all the APIs and everything. That's well, because this is core lib, right? Yeah, so, I understand. Yeah. Well, that's kind of, it, it makes sense. Yeah. Well, it wasn't like this originally. Like the, the fact that Phantom is now so big has to do with the fact that we had, like we originally moved a bunch of stuff out, but then eventually we had to move a bunch of stuff back in in order to be compatible with the past, right? Like the faction pulled in a bunch of stuff, low pulled in a bunch of stuff. But the, the, the sad thing is it's the first pass that we have finished, right? With the attributes, we basically have to revisit them all again. But that's why I, I like you to fix the API reviewer to show the beeps on the attributes. Because that will problem is it will not help. It will probably have to look at every generic API to see whether attributes are yes. missing. Yeah, and but we can search for patterns, right? We can search for like try. And call it faster to do yeah. as well. Yeah. I'm not sure the diff is helping you because you have to still, otherwise you don't see missing ones. You we'll probably have to do a full pass. Well, yeah, but the div will help to see what changed. Yeah, it would. It, I would agree with that. You just have to do it. Like maybe you can scroll a little bit, like, or you can make it smoother. Right, the scrolling smoother. Yeah, like an animated scroller, like a credit in a movie. You should turn on smooth, smooth scrolling. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. first you need to add that option, but then you should turn on smooth scrolling. So I like to like disappoint Chrome? you. API Viewer is not an electron app. <laughs> so I can't do that. Anyway, all right, guys, online. Uh, thanks, Joe. I think I'm hanging up now. Uh...